Just kidding. It's still taking care. Oh, there it is. All right, <laughs> Seth, Seth, I'm super excited. Why are you I'm excited, excited Alvin? Because we have a theme song. Woohoo! All right, let's get this episode started the right way. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this show, everybody. Hey. Hey. Jazzy. <laughs> if you were not dancing that whole time, you didn't do it right. <laughs> I was dancing with Peanut's character. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's exactly what it sounds like. That's so funny. That's perfect. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to another episode of CTL Speaks. This is your co-host, Aubin. And I'm Seth. And we are here with the... Uh, what are we calling this episode? This episode is titled After School Special. We have our CTL after school classes, uh, and we are here with the teachers and our educational uh, director of CTL here for the show tonight to answer all questions and tell you about all the wonderful options we have. Uh, let's go around the circle real quick and introduce ourselves, uh, and then we'll get this party started. So let's start uh, right here below me. Let's start with Sarah. Hey, I'm Sarah Decker. And I'm going to be hanging out with the main stage minis uh, this season. And that is ages four, five, and six. Welcome, Sarah. And next, we'll go to the right, of, on my screen at least, and that is Katie Conklin. Watching you bumble through this is my favorite part of the episode. Hi, um, I'm Katie Conklin, and I will be directing 6th uh, through 8th grade Building a Review. Um, I'm very excited. We had a lot of fun over the summer, um, which is kind of what this class is based off of. So I'm excited to hopefully see some familiar faces as well as some new ones. Awesome. Thank you, Katie. And we'll go to the last teacher that we have on here. We'll go with the Kim, and then Brandy will let you sit, be safe for last. Hi, I'm Kim Fulmer. I am teaching 4th and 5th grade class called rap punzel i imagine we'll be rapping and i'm a little bummed because i have the same age as i had the last time so all my kids will be too fruit like too old for my class this time but looking forward to meeting all new people thank you so much kim and last but certainly not least why <laughs> what? Okay. i'm still um, dancing to the theme song <laughs> Um, I'm Brandy, and I'm the Director of Educational Programming, so I'm not teaching a class this semester, but I'm excited for all of these ladies, and also for Taylor and Abby, who couldn't be with us tonight, but I'm excited to get these classes underway, and should be a good time. Yeah, it is. Can you, can we go around, let's, uh, we'll go reverse order, so we'll start with Kim, Ms. Rap Punzel. You've introduced uh, your show, can you tell us a little bit about like the class, what exactly you'll be doing um, in the class. If, if parents are signing their kiddos up, what might the kiddo look forward to? What's going to be happening week from week? Um, obviously, don't read us the syllabus, but, you know, give us a gist. Um, well, first couple of classes are always a lot of getting to know you games and getting to know the show and getting the kids interested in what parts they think they might want to be in the show and I feel like this one's going to have a lot of like rhythmic type of activities saying rap is involved and we like games in my class. Do you want to give us a little bit of a synopsis, Kim, or no? I cannot. I, I, I can. If <laughs> we we, we just a little script. synopsis. That's Help why I'm out. like, uh, because the scripts just got here on Friday. So um, it is, it's the familiar story of Rapunzel, but it is told completely in like verse slash rhyme. So like every single line is like either a couplet or it's some different rhyme scheme pattern. So, but it is like, you know, Rapunzel in the tower and the witch and, you know, the baker that steals the beans, all of that is, is part of it. So, but it's a, it's a cute, it's pretty short, but it's a it's a cute little take on that familiar story. I think um, I think we should have Kim do a rap for it, just like freestyle, <laughs> a hot sixteen, just to show that she's really ready for this. It's just uh... I I don't freestyle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 
Oh, I love that. I have laughed on the CTL stage, though. That's the thing that held her back. Yes. I learned this style. track I rapped. So I got it in me. <laughs> Just not we, freestyle. We favorite. should say, while we're going around doing this, there are only six spots left in that class. So if you'd like to be a part of Rap Rapunzel, you want to make sure that you're getting your spots sooner rather than later. That cat class is already 50% sold. Oh, wow. So, it's going to yeah. be fun. Always yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> Ms. Conklin? All right. So um, I am looking forward to kind of creating, uh, like obviously building a review. Um, and we have kind of the liberties this time around to create our own. Whereas like over the summer, we had given like, it was a built show already. So picking a theme in the first like week or two, um, maybe doing some auditions for, you know, what's your voice part. Um, and then picking songs that we're interested in to kind of create a through line of this theme. Um, and just kind of, you know, working piece by piece, like how do we incorporate choreography? How do we incorporate props to help, um, build this story? Um, so that way when people come to see it, they kind of get the gist of, you know, this is what it's about. We're having fun. We're learning theater. Um, and we're planting all of those good seeds to, you know, help learn theater moving forward. So, yes, that will be the gist. <laughs> Sarah? Yeah, I'm going to give a quick plug for Katie first. Um, my daughter did camp with Katie over the summer and loved it. And it was amazing. And she learned so much. And uh, so we think two thumbs up for Katie and her class. Thank um, you. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So Minnie's on the main stage is going to be a place where your um, little star can come and let their imagination just go crazy. We're going to do music, movement, and dancing. We're going to tell stories all different kinds of ways with crafts, with our words. Um, really, it is just a place where the kids are gonna be able to build up their confidence. We already know that they have big imaginations. And so we are giving them a space to just really, really just pour onto that um, and just let it go. And it's gonna be so fun. Yeah, and going back, sorry, Katie, I missed you. So um, Building Review only has 10 spots left, it looks like. Brandy, I'm like looking real fast. So if you have these two. Correct me, please. Um, but it looks like building a review only has 10 slots left. Um, so you want to also grab on hold of that. And as well as um, minis on the main stage, that one has two options. You have a 10 a.m. option, um, which has plenty of space. We're really excited about those daytime options, which are brand new for us. Um, and then the evening option um, only has seven left. So all of these are really kind of filling up fast, which is really great. We love seeing our families coming back after a really eventful and exciting summer um and they're they're taking advantage of it which is great um brandy can you talk us a little bit through um the one class that's not here we were missing abby and taylor um who are teaching that last class can you tell us a little bit about that sure um so that one we have titled party like a pop star um and that was sort of an idea that came from a summer camp that we used to do and i think sarah i think you taught it the one year and then sarah pulver actually taught it i think last year or the year before. And that's kind of focused on, I would say, singing and also stage presence and sort of taking on that persona of like the pop idol. So that'll be a little bit more, you know, like getting comfortable on stage and being able to really pick a song that you like and sing well. And there'll be um, like a red carpet kind of a thing on the last day with photos and we might have a make a star for the walk of fame um little crafts like that and just like a high energy kind of show your stuff kind of class with abby and taylor that's great that's it's always a fun one well i think what's great is i think sir i think you actually pitched that concept when you came on um board for a summer camp and it really yeah. is a really great class where these kiddos get to um, kind of let out all of their wiggles and all of their, you know, star power that they have deep down yeah. inside. And they just get to express themselves, which is really great. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, walk us through, Brandy, 
create kind of big picture wise planning these classes what's that like um like what are you and the teachers trying to do for the community what are you trying to provide tell us a little bit about that um through your eyes as a director because you're kind of looking at all of these classes and making sure that there's enough for all age groups and those kinds of things so just walk us through a little bit about your mindset going into the fall um i think this year specifically it was kind of like what has been the the popular thing that everybody's been asking about um so like with katie and with sarah we're kind of jumping off what we had going on in the summer which were two really um well received classes so with the, the little ones four five and six um that's an age that i don't think we offered last year like during the school year so we wanted to kind of build that back up so we have kids that sort of stick around and they grow through the program. And then we have like a nice crop of, of kids who just really love to, to be at CTL. Um, and then, um, with Rapunzel, we had into the woods over the summer into the woods junior, um, was our sort of high school show. And then also we had a once upon a summer camp and those were also really popular things. And I think with Rapunzel, that's something that everybody kind of knows and, and it's a little bit of a different spin on on something to keep it exciting. Um, so for me, I guess my biggest goal is to make CTL be a place where um, the kids can really be comfortable, not only being themselves, but building confidence and making friends and having that community. Because I think we all know as, as performers, like, why do we keep sticking around doing shows. Well, we love performing, but we also love just hanging out with everybody and making those connections. And I think um, for, the, for the kids, that's just as important because sometimes, you know, some, some of our students are, they're in a cyber program or they've missed a couple of traditional school years with, with pandemic stuff. So it's sort of giving them lots of friends and lots of, you know, people that are in their corner not just in a school setting, but also um, on the stage. You're still muted. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I can't hear. (laughs) Robin, everyone on the podcast would have no idea, but you had to say it. You could just let that go. Podcast listeners would have no idea. If I didn't say it, someone was going to. It was a really awkward moment. It's like, it was great. I just a, thought I went deaf. It wasn't. <laughs> Kim has that natural worry. Yeah. How, how, did, how did that go, Sif? Um, watching you fumble your way through this is just, it's just great. Is it? <laughs> the resentment between the co-hosts should probably, <laughs> should probably leave before the next episode, but we'll work on that <laughs> off screen. So teachers, talk me a little bit about um, coming off of Brandy's answer. Why do you like teaching? Why do you like, because um, you're giving up your valuable time, obviously, CTL is a nonprofit, so it's not like you're like coming exclusively for the thousands and thousands of dollars you get for teaching because we're a nonprofit and we're very generous to, and thankful for all of our donors and sponsors out there. But if we could pay you the, the world, we would, but we obviously can't. So why? what brings you back? What You're giving up your free time to hang out with these students and these kiddos. Um, why are you there? That's a jump ball. That's anyone, anyone can answer first. All right. I'm jumping in. Um, for me, especially with this age group, that is when I really started to get the like itch and love for theater. Um, it it was the first thing that I felt like I was really a part of and I liked it and I was good at it. So like, it just felt right. And I felt at home and I made a lot of friends and it's just like the perfect time for kids to start planting that seed. Um, for like a love of what might be a hobby, what might become a career. Like it just is such a big deal. Um, And I love being able to give back in that way and share my passion and create and cultivate a passion in kids. Great answer. (laughs) Next. (laughs) I'll go. I, my very first experience at CTL was in the Adams family where there were quite a few kids. <laughs> they were 14, they were young to me and they were so great. <laughs> They're still great. I still speak to every single one of them. And I just loved the way CTL treated the young people who came in there. And 
I went to school to be a teacher and it didn't pan out, but it didn't mean I did not still love it. And now I get to be a part of CTL doing what I love to do and hopefully inspiring the kids to do what they love to do. The yes, end. I, that was great. That's great. Um, <laughs> I loved, <laughs> I love what Brandy had to say. I mean, the word community is in the name of the theater. Um, but even from day one, um, it's a space where I want to make sure the kids know that they belong, that they have a place here, that their ideas are all valuable. Um, Pre-K, four, five, six-year-olds are so spongy and they're so free and nothing inhibits them. So not only am I there to guide them through storytelling, but I get so much back from them and it really is pure joy. Um, so for anyone out there who is listening and thinking about whether their kid would benefit from this, the answer is yes, because it's a place where they will become part of something and feel like what they have to contribute is worthwhile um, because they are valuable as a human being, even as a four or five, six-year-old human being. So, yeah. <laughs> I want to. Can I take her class? Is it? Um, <laughs> yes. I I'm going to 10 a.m. on Robin. Go with me at 10 a.m. We'll let, we'll let adults <laughs> audit every class. Got it. That's wonderful. Um, so, walk me through a little bit about what you're looking forward to most. I know some people really like the getting to know you, like those those games where Kim in the first couple of weeks before you kind of get into, especially a scripted program. Because it is, at the end of the day, the kids like to put on a show. They like to be part of that pressure of, where's my costume? What's this prop? Why am I not? Ha why don't I have a quick change after every scene? Like, they enjoy that putting on a show performance. But um, like Sarah said, there's so much more to the classes than just doing a show, right? And and even once you're um, a performer and you've been around, you know that there's so much more than just putting on the show. There's the relationships you build backstage. There's the professionalism you show and those kind of things. So what... What is your favorite part of walking young performers through that process? Um, and again, jump ball, whoever wants to grab it um, and run. I know for me, because when I taught um, our in our educational program, it always was those first couple of days because we are such a large reaching organization. We had kiddos coming up from the Lewisburg area and kiddos coming down from the Liberty area. And they had nothing like they never even heard of each other. Um, and by week two, they were finding each other and then sitting together and then they only wanted to be partners with each other. Um, so it's kind of that that microcosm of CTL during a, like an eight week rehearsal process or a six week rehearsal process in 45 minutes. And then you go from there. Um, and it's also the blending of kids that have been in every program um, that we've ever offered and fresh faces that we've never seen before, which we also love. So you kind of get both of those. But the the mixing of that was always my favorite. Anyone? Uh, so, uh, oh, nope, Kim. Sarah can go first. She may. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll, I'll allow it. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> well, let me go first because minis are going to do something a little different. Hmm. And this works really well over the summer with petite players. We ended camp with a play along, and that allowed. Um, every kid's family and or friends to come and be part of what Great. we did with some of their favorite activities. And um, Brandy got really good feedback over that. It was really fun. Um, and it, I think that it really encouraged, you know, whoever, whoever the kid, you know, whoever's in their family, that it's something that they can do together. They can play at home and it's so connecting and it's so bonding. So for main stage minis, we're gonna do something similar to that where it we will invite friends and family to come and then it will be participatory. That's great. So that's a little different, but it's gonna be really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Kim, do you have an <laughs> answer now? May I? <laughs> I, I feel like we have to raise our hands since it's the after school special. I'm not going to lie. I love when they put on the show. 
Because <laughs> it's the end? Why, no, Kim? Not at Why? all. Because you see all this build up to it and you're like, this is never going to work out. And then like each week it's starting to work out. And then I'm backstage. Like I can't even see what's happening. And you can hear the laughter and you can hear the kids giggling on stage and they may have forgotten their lines, but somebody else picked up. Like all the things you want to happen are happening. And the kids are so happy when it's finished. They're so, they're on that like cloud. Like we are when we finish opening night, the kids like, I wish I could give them 10 more shows. They were, I maybe two. Um, <laughs> but they, I just loved that part of it. Even though I, I never really got to see their final performance. I, just the way they were, oh, so elated. I, I would, it's my favorite part. Well, especially your age too. I mean, I mean all the ages, but um they take it so seriously. Like it's very much like it's a fun class. Like we have to promise parents out there that like it's we don't so much fun. We don't install that in these students no, just, home and they're like, I have to learn my lines and I have to like we will help them and we will yep. encourage them and we will help them grow and like it's okay if they mess up. We want them to mess up. We all mess up and that's part of the process, but like some of these kiddos walk, walk like march in and they're well, like, you, they have, have class. This is the one, like, I had a mini director in my last class. Like, yeah. I really think you should do it this way. And I'm like, all right, let's try it because that's what they're there for. But I love that. How, how serious. I mean, we always, I know Brandy and I grew up in the area together and where there was nothing like this for students of our, when we went through school and it was Not so. Either. Yeah, right. I mean, I would just <laughs> go back and have these opportunities would be amazing. Um, but regard, nevertheless, um, Brent, Katie. Um, yeah, my favorite part is when they have like their aha moment of like, they hit their big note, or they hit their piece of choreography, or like, they remembered their lyrics, and they like, have that like light bulb. Oh, my gosh, like, I'm doing it. I'm good. Like, and then everyone kind of cheers for them in the camp. And like the confidence part is incredible. Um, that like, that's how we build. And like Kim said, like you're working and like the first couple weeks are like, how are we going to get there? Like <laughs> then they start to have these aha moments and everyone's cheering for each other. And like, they have a secret handshake or like a go tea, like before the, the shows, before we do our runs and like that energy and excitement is just like the best. <laughs> Not that you don't get that with adults, but <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely more vibrant in the middle school age. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very true. Um, so what would what would a piece of advice be for the three? And Brandy, please, you chime in too. For um, a parent who might be watching or watches later who listens and they have a kiddo, maybe the kiddos, exp they, they sing along to every Disney movie or they sing in the back of the van every time they go anywhere or they just love to dance whenever they hear music or they're very enthusiastic when they're retelling a story. What's your, what's your advice besides getting involved or, or obviously like signing up? Because for a lot of parents, cost is there, right? I mean, um, everything's up. We're dealing with that all, all over the world. We have scholarship opportunities, which I'll let Brandy talk about a little bit later. But um, it's it's a big investment for some for some parents out there. What what are some positives that their students are taking away rather than just a thirty or forty five minute show, right? Because um, the show really means a lot to the kiddos, and the show really means a lot to the parents. Um, but what life skills are these kids walking away with? Because I, I truly believe that the students are walking away with a lot of strong life skills that they can they can put into practice throughout um, their everyday lives. So to talk a little bit about that. Anyone. Sorry, I didn't direct it again. I'll get better. I promise. Jump ball. Um, well, I'll say in terms of, of skills leadership it's amazing to see like the leaders come out of kids and sometimes kids you wouldn't think and some different leadership styles like one kid might always know where they're going and might be the quietest kid ever but everybody else on stage is like oh like I gotta follow them because they know where they're supposed to stand next and I'm next to them it's it's the leadership and the, and the team building and and 
working with with people that you might not get along with. I mean, that is part of it too. There's sometimes in small groups, big groups, it's like, okay, like so-and-so and I are in this class again and we, we kind of butt heads, but that's, that's part of life is, is kind of overcoming that and, and learning how to be kind and, and respectful, even when personalities sometimes clash and, um, and the confidence building is as well. I mean, there's that, there's like a saying, and I'm not going to quote it because I'm going to get it wrong, but there's that saying that's like, you know, the kid in, in the band room that has no home or, you know, does anybody know what I'm getting? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like the music department is the home for those who don't have a home. It's, it's watching sometimes the kids that are the outcasts become part of something. Um, so I guess my, my advice for anybody that's on the fence is I, I think it's more likely you'll regret not doing it than giving it a shot. That's, that's kind of my philosophy on, on different things. And also we do have scholarships available and they're on the website um, on the CTL class page, but also if you need the link, you can email me at theagire at ctlshows.com and I will send it to you. We'll work on getting the scholarship link in the description of the video too. So okay. you can go right through there if you're watching on Facebook. Anyone else? Sarah. Yeah, I remember from the summer, there were a couple of families who signed up their kiddos. And in the comment section, they they wrote about, you know, so and so is shy. <laughs> and um, almost like just, you know, like a heads up, like, you know, not quite sure how this is going to go. And so I think regardless of if you have a kid who, you know, will scream, let it go or not, um, there is, there is a place for any of them in the class. And uh, we all have different ways of communicating. And I think that being able to explore visual art, um, literary art, musical art, movement art, all of the different ways that we can tell stories with ourselves and with our experiences, um, really does have lifelong benefits as we are going to be in communication with people throughout our entire life. So as a shy kid myself, like you were saying, Brandy, like being in music gave me a way to express emotions and reading books gave me a way to find words when it wasn't easy for me. So my hope is that the shy kid or the exuberant kid will learn about that communication, giving and taking, sharing and receiving. Yeah, that, that's that's awesome. Uh, Kim, Katie? I mean, I for the parents, I would say, don't worry about your child not fitting in because like Brandy said, it's a place where you go to fit in. Like I had a late starter in one of my classes and he was a sports guy. And so we found ways to put sports into it. There's always going to be something for someone. We're not just going to be like, I mean, I have said like, if you don't want to do this, I'm not going to force you to do it. Everybody wants to do it. Like, even if they want to sit it out one time, like, because the kids are just open. And even if you're a little closed off, like even the shyest kids were superstars by the end. Like they all acted like, oh, I don't like this one or we don't. And they supported each other so much. It's unbelievable. Like they are there for each other. And that's just, I, that's what I love about theater in general. And that's why I love teaching these classes. You get to see them grow and do things you would think they would never do. I'll just jump in and kind of piggyback on all of those answers because everybody, I don't feel like I can top like your, your child will benefit greatly no matter what age they are. And like, if they work their way up through in these classes in the future, like just being, you know, it's so inclusive and a loving place. Um, 
and confidence will come. And maybe one day they're really uncomfortable moving a box from stage left to stage right. But the next time they march in and they're like, you know what? I can even move the chair. And, <laughs> and you know, just finding like their place um, and knowing that every week they're gonna show up and have fun and learn something. And it's, you know, going to end up being this like super fun show that they do, but they're also making best friends and, you know, building a community like we've talked about. Um, yeah. I feel like all the good answers are out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, big Brandy, anything big that we've missed about our after school classes? Um, they they meet weekly um, for roughly how many weeks, Brandy? Um, they're all eight weeks. Um, so there's eight sessions each. And some of them, um, and I can elaborate on this if we need to. Uh, some of them, the like the final week of the classes is the week of Thanksgiving. Um, so there are a few instances where um, like Sarah's classes on Thursdays, obviously the final class will not be Thanksgiving day. And the same with the pop stars, like they, it won't be, um, Friday. And I don't, I don't believe we've set concrete times for those closing programs, but um, they will be earlier that week. So they are eight weeks. Um, once a week, I, I believe they're all 60 minutes. I don't think anything is an hour and a half or less than an hour. So I believe they're all one hour long, um, eight weeks. And what's the start date, Brandy? October 3rd is the first, it's that week. So that's the Monday. So that'll be Kim with Rapunzel on Mondays and then Katie on Tuesdays, Sarah Thursdays and Taylor and Abby on Fridays with pop stars. Walk me through um, a little bit. What, let's say, are, are, are we allowed to add more students? Cause like we went through how many seats are left. So should parents kind of be signing up quicker rather than later or because I, I did see a couple questions about, are there, is there a deadline? Um, do I have to sign up by a certain point? When do I register? Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that, Brandy? Um, sure. I think for, um, for Kim's Rapunzel, that one is the only one where there's like a set show with a set number of roles. Um, there are narrator roles in Rapunzel and it, the script allows for up to four. I'm sure there could be more. Um, it is, I don't think it'll be an issue with ratios in terms of how many adults per um, per class. I don't think we're getting up there yet. Um, but if, if that were to be, I mean, I'll also be in the building. I could certainly assist if we had like such a high demand that we needed, you know, some, some helpers. I think we could easily navigate that um so I, I mean i'm open to adding more spots as long as the teachers it's really really up to them um but yeah so yeah so pretty much make sure you're signing up now before we even get to that yeah before <laughs> yeah. we kind of get even get into the waiting game or wait list or those kind of things just because we want to make sure that it's one safe for all the students there um that the teachers feel that they can handle everything that's going on with i mean you put 12 minis in a room and I immediately don't want to be Sarah Decker because <laughs> that's a lot of minis. <laughs> Thursdays, I will be out of the building. <laughs> that is maximum minis. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Yeah. Um, so I, even middle schoolers too, Katie, there's, there's a finite <laughs> amount of Axe body spray and show tunes that can be handled in one room. There is a reason I teach high school. There is a definite reason. I love middle school. I loved it. I love it. Um, yeah, right. So well, any any final thoughts, you four, on our educational programming? Anything at all? I have a question. Before oh, sorry, Alvin. Oh, no, let everyone else go first, and then I'll jump in. Just do it. If you're okay. thinking about it. I'm talking about the camp. Sorry, not your question. If your child is listening or if a parent is listening or you know someone with a child that this would be great for, please share. Please 
you know, get the word out there that these are great individuals teaching um, great students. So this is just a, a really awesome opportunity to put your foot in the water or jump in, or if it's your favorite thing ever, um, then you're already in the water. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> um, but it, it's just going to be a really fun time. I'm really excited to be back at CTL working with this group of individuals. Yeah. Any, Alvin, what was your question? So my question is for the teachers and, and of course, Brandy. Um, and Brandy, this is a tough one for you because it's literally your job. But uh, what is it about CTL uh, that is the most gratifying thing for you in terms of doing these classes? What is it that keeps you coming? Because you've all taught classes with CTL before um, and, and you keep coming back. So what is it about CTL, the organization, or just the, the classes themselves that is the most gratifying for you that, that keeps you wanting to do this very thing? Jump ball, as Seth would say. So CGL gives kids a platform to just do what they do best. Um, you know, sometimes, so I'm a parent, so I'm a mom of two kids. And sometimes I feel like I have to, you know, set boundaries and rein it in. <laughs> I want to, as much as I want to be the fun mom, um, sometimes there's got to be limits on that. And, uh, oh, hi, Allie Dinges. <laughs> Yay. I might get yeah. one this year. <laughs> you might get a Dinges. <laughs> um, so I just, I just really appreciate that um, this is a place and a space where, where kids can just do it. Um, I felt that way for myself when I stepped on the stage as part of a show. There was permission to just try. There was permission to fail. And there was permission to just be free in it all. And I really want that to be the same sort of feeling for these minis. Cause again, yes, they are four or five and six year years old, but they are so special and so amazing. And we have so much to learn from them as well. So thank you to CTL for just giving us that platform. Katie, I'll go. Katie's um, <laughs> giving me that look. Um, I think I just keep saying the same thing. It's just a place where from the youngest to the oldest person who walks in those doors has the permission to be who they are. And that's what I keep passing on to the kids in the class. Like there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do wrong. Just do, do what you feel and do be who you are and everybody around them be kind and a good friend to each other. And that's what CTL is for me. So that's what I hope I'm passing on to the kids. And for me, it's just giving and creating the passion for theater. Um, it is so gratifying to know that like what we work on, like theater is my favorite thing. Um, and I could talk about it forever. Um, and that for an hour a week, I have the opportunity to pass on to students like what I love the most. And maybe, like I said earlier, like it will become their favorite thing too. Um, and it's just a really safe place to be you. Brandy, want to close them out? Oh, uh, sure. I, I guess I would say my, one of my favorite things is, is nurturing that passion. And, and we've all kind of touched on this, that the theater is something you can do throughout your entire life. And with, like, I'm also a mom to a, to a little one. She's two and a half. And like, I already can't wait until she can take Sarah's <laughs> class because I'm like, oh, she's gonna, she's gonna love this. And then, and also what Seth said, like, we didn't have this when we were, I don't even know how young, but, but I would have lived for this. Like, this would have been my life. It's like, forget school. Like I get to like, go to like theater class after this, like that would have been it. So like, to create that place and that opportunity for, for the next generation is, is really exciting. Um, and, and also just, yeah, watching that, that journey and, and seeing where, where people end up after, you know, they took Katie's class at, at CTL or, 
you know, um, using those skills, public speaking and, and all that kind of stuff. Cause there's so many different avenues and so many places you can go, even though it's labeled theater, it's, it's, it's so much more than that. So I guess that's my speech. <laughs> I mean, Brandy hit the nail on the head for me. I mean, I was brought on to, um, the staff of CTL, um, in Brandy's position eight years ago, um, which seems like forever ago. Um, but I mean, it was, it was to start, um, our after school programming year round because our summer camps were so, so enthusiastically attended and, and parents were begging for things to happen during the school year. Um, so the, the idea that, um, the next generation is being nurtured one by Brandy at the helm, um, who's not only an excellent performer, but kind of has an eye out for making sure people are being nurtured and taken care of and, and all of those things that are so important, but then to hire and to manage a great staff, like the five teachers that we have so far, um, not to mention our voice, our voice studios, which are growing and becoming more popular. And um, that means the world that means the world to the organization and, and to myself personally, just that there's this generation that is going to be excited and we're going to see them go off to college and move away and, or come back to Williamsport and, or be back on the stage. I mean, we already have students who have gone through some of the high school classes when I started, who are now back auditioning and being involved, which is just insane. Um, but it's, it's exciting that they're getting their, they're taking their first steps in a lifetime of performance with, with you all. And that's, that's amazing. It's amazing to know that you guys are impacting them in such a positive way and that CTL can help in any way that we can. So thank you all for your hard work coming up. You have a long, a long couple weeks, but, um, I'm sure you will take every moment to, to love it and to, um, be be amazing with your kiddos. Aubin, anything else for our after school special? I know. I I, I think I'm I think I'm good. Oh man, these eight o'clock at Sunday nights. Whew. I'm still I've still got three hours in me. Aubin's got time. his chicken in the oven. <laughs> I've got, I haven't eaten dinner. So I've got I've got dinner waiting downstairs, but uh I still got three hours of awakeness left. I drank like my sleepy time tea. I had a Should great conversation to wake her up when, when I'm downstairs, but I'm, I no. might just eat without her. I don't know. No. I think that's it, Aubin. All right. That's it. This concludes another episode of CTL Speaks. Thank you so much to all of our teachers who have thank joined you, us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you. You guys are amazing. And we will uh, hopefully, um, I forget what I was going to say, something about Abby and Taylor. Uh, maybe we'll have them do a video to talk about the class that we can post on our Facebook page so you guys sure. can hear and meet them um, since they were able to tonight uh so without further ado this concludes another episode thank you so much for watching everybody have a great night thanks everyone thank you